Church family, we have so many amazing events taking place on the Avenue. But none quite as momentous as today's 19th pastoral anniversary for the Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. We are so excited to have Dr. Howard John Wesley coming all the way from Alexandria, Virginia, to be our guest preacher of the day. I also found out just moments ago that there's a bit of an after party planned for today after services, so stay tuned. That's right, and we will conclude with the Blessings on Blessings Church Picnic at the Discovery Green starting at 319, where we will have food, fun, and fellowship for everyone. Last year, we had an amazing time, so trust me, you don't want to miss out. Church family, I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Brian Keith Robeson II. And this is your Avenue News. Join us for week four of Wednesdays in the Word. This week, we will hear from Bishop Joseph W. Walker III, pastor of the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee, and international presiding bishop of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Somebody tonight, when you look at what God did in your life, you look at how far God brought you, look at your neighbor, tell them, this should not be a quiet pew. Tell them, because God's been too good. We look forward to this time of revival. Meet us in the cathedral at 7 p.m. The premier young adult holiday gala will take place at the Hilton University of Houston on Saturday, December 2nd at 6 p.m. For the first time, we are stepping out in our holiday chic and walking the red carpet to celebrate the season. Early bird tickets are on sale now on our website and space is limited. Follow the Young Adults Ministry on social media for more updates. The Health, Wellness, and Recreation Ministry is hosting a 5K family fun run and bike ride. There will also be a walking course in the parking lot for those who may not want to walk the 5K. Advanced bike riders will participate in a 40K scenic bike ride. Please bring new school supplies as donations to participate. Register today. Scan the QR code for more information. All young adults are invited to join us for our annual Friendsgiving on Saturday, November 11th at 11.30 a.m. This is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate all of God's blessings. Come to the church for food, games, music, and surprises. Bring a friend and a grateful heart. Tickets are only $15 and space is limited. So get your tickets on Eventbrite today. We look forward to seeing you there. The virtual information and orientation meeting for the Boys Rites of Passage program will take place on October 21st and November 18th at 11 a.m. We're excited about the future of the program and your potential future involvement. If you are interested in volunteering or registering your child, visit the church's website for the Zoom link. For more information, please contact Reverend Richard Boone IV at rboone at wbc.org. Come and learn more about the Young Adult Ministry. Stop by after both services to grab a snack and a cool drink and learn how you can get involved. Tables will be set up in the front of the church and the courtyard. See you there. All veterans on the avenue are invited to join us for an appreciation dinner on Sunday, November 12th, as we observe Veterans Day and express our gratitude for your service. Register online on the events page of our website or email Reverend Barbara Williams at bwilliams at wheelerbc.org. After experiencing the pain and discomfort of fibroids, I endured six rounds of IVF to have two children. I experienced multiple miscarriages and now I have two children. Our stories are different, but our journeys were similar. No matter your journey, you can find support in the waiting room. Whether you're on the path to parenthood or considering it in the future, we invite you to join us the fourth Thursday of every month at 6.30 p.m. here at the church. The Rating Room is a place to find support, encouragement, and solace during challenging times. I did. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. For more information, contact The Waiting Room at wheelerbc.org. There's so much taking place, and we hope you stay connected. For more information, follow us on Flock Notes, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or our app. I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Brian Keith Robeson II. And this has been your Avenue, Avenue News. News. And remember, we are Wheeler. 
Web. Seven people in every section in the cathedral, in the sanctuary, who will testify, I got to get to church. Because if I don't get to church, there's no telling what my spirit might do to me. If I don't get to church, there's no telling what my mind might do to me. If I don't get to the Lord's house, there's no telling how depleted I might be by the next time you see me. Somebody in here ought to thank God that you were able to wake up this morning, put your clothes on, make your way to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, park your car all the way over there, walk all the way to the cathedral, make your way to the sanctuary, find yourself a seat, sit yourself down.
the Lord. You can now take your preferred posture for prayer. We have no services scheduled for this week. Hallelujah. However, please keep the family of one of our longtime members, Sister Mildred Prince, in your prayers. A private graveside service was held for Sister Prince last Thursday. Please also visit the Congregational Care page on the church website for a complete listing of care concerns, as well as we invite you to refer to the list on the screen for our bereaved families and for members requesting our prayers for health concerns. As we approach the throne of grace, would every head bow and would every heart pray? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms shall all pass away but there's just something wonderful there's just something powerful there's just something majestic there's just something regal about that name and it's in the name of jesus that we pray on today God, we thank you for the privilege of being able to enter into your presence. For in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. God, you said when we are on one accord that you inhabit the praises of your people. We thank you for what you did in the 8 o'clock hour. But we ask that you would take us a little higher from glory to glory in this worship experience. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. God, I thank you for your children who have pressed their way to be in your presence on today. Thank you, God, that even if they faced some difficulties during the week, even if they faced some sickness in their body that they didn't anticipate, even if the doctor gave them a diagnosis that they did not expect, we thank you that you are the chief physician and that the doctors may practice medicine, God, but you have the final say. Thank you, God, for every bowed down head, for every broken heart, for every bereaved heart, for you are the very lifter of our head. Father, on today, we thank you for the opportunity to seek refuge in your presence, that whatever it is that we're going through in this moment at time, we lay it at your feet right now because we decree and declare that today is a day of celebration. We thank you, God, for the angel of this house. We thank you for the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. We thank you for 19 years of leadership as a pastor of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And we thank you, God, for how you've anointed him to preach the word with power and authority. But we also do declare and we prophesy it by faith that, that his former days shall be greater than his latter days. And just as the anointing oil was poured over the head of Aaron till it rolled down his face and down his beard and covered his robe, we thank you for a fresh anointing in the name of Jesus that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour your living fresh oil over your servant Marcus Cosby from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus that supernatural gifting shall be awakened in the name of Jesus. We thank you for greater supernatural sight 
in the name of Jesus. We thank you for opening up his ears towards heaven and hearing your heart to be able to declare what thus saith the Lord in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for his family. We thank you for Lady Cosby. We thank you for how she's covered, how she's interceded, how she's inter how she's covered her husband over the years, God. We thank you, Lord, that even when there was a need, God, that she sought you. We ask in the name of Jesus that she would send your angels as a hedge of protection around the Cosby family. We ask, God, in the name of Jesus that you would cover every child, Lord. And we thank you for the preacher of the hour on today. Thank you for the mighty word that went forth on this morning. Now we ask that you would fill him afresh, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, God. And we pray that he would preach, preach with power, authority, and boldness in the name of Jesus. We ask that worship and praise would be freely flowing from our lips, that you would be pleased with the sweet-smelling savor that shall go forth in the house. And we come to give your name glory, we come to give your name honor, and we've come to give your name praise that's due to you and you alone. And all God's children who stand in agreement said amen, amen, and amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All my life.
found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said and you have made them equal to us. We have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first. And the first will be last. The word of God for the people of God. Please remain standing for this morning's hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Come on, saints, let's sing together. There is a name.
place. Come on, if you love him, show some sign. If you love him because he first loved you and me. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. Good Sunday morning to each of you, my sisters, my brothers. What a joy it is to greet you in the name that is above all names, even the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm delighted to acknowledge the presence of special guests who are with us. Uh, we want to thank God for all of our first time visitors. If that's your reality, would you stand so that we might thank God for your presence among us? Any first time visitors to the Wheeler Avenue Church? Amen. There you are. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Church family, help me give a really warm Wheeler welcome to all of these first time visitors this Sunday. Amen. To each of you who stands as first-time guest on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, and our founding pastor emeritus, who is Wheeler wherever today, would you help me thank God for our founding pastor who is streaming worship? Amen. On their behalf, indeed on behalf of the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue, allow for me to express to each of you just how excited we are that you've opted to worship with us this Sunday morning. If you have a church home, please take back our warmest greetings and regards. Let your church family, let your pastor know that we were excited about your presence among us this day. However, if you do not have a church home, we pray that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience of worship. We want for you to make yourselves at home. We would love to call you our sisters, our brothers in this family of faith, this body of believers at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Whatever your reality is, we just thank God that you're here and we can prove to you just how excited your presence makes us this Sunday. Church family, one more time, help me thank God for all of our first time visitors. Amen, amen. We likewise want to thank God for all of you who are worshiping with us virtually. We are Wheeler wherever. So wherever you are around this, our God's globe, it is our joy to welcome you even virtually into this experience of worship. We pray that you have been blessed and will be blessed as a consequence of this experience of worship. If you're on YouTube or Facebook and it's your very first time, there are chats that are enabled. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know that you're a first time worshiper with us. And there are brothers and sisters in those chats who would love to greet you with the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ on this Sunday. We thank God for you one and all. We are joined in the cathedral by the presence of Brother Tyrone Willis, who is running for Houston City Council District B. We thank God for your presence among us, Brother Willis. The Cooper, Canty, and Tyndall family. Would you all stand up one more time? We want to thank you all for being with us this day. Is this a, it's a family reunion? Or y'all just, yeah, praise the Lord. We thank God for your, your uh, choosing to worship with us on this Lord's Day. Was there another candidate for office that I didn't mention? Who is this? Steve Barr. Steve Barr, running for? Aldean School Board. Aldean School Board, amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I happen to be a proud graduate of the Aldean Independent School District. So praise the Lord, amen. Moment of personal privilege. Listen, uh, all of these brothers have come to celebrate uh, an alpha man's anniversary. Would you all stand up? Was it something I said? We, we thank God for the presence of the brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi. Would you stand? We want to honor your presence among us. Amen. Amen. And the brothers of the Kappa League, would you stand? We want to thank God for your presence as well. We thank God for you. All right, y'all can sit down. <laughs> we honor your presence among us. Listen, uh, I am delighted. I am thrilled. It gives me great joy to suggest to some, uh, to inform some, and remind others that this is no ordinary day. This is no average day. This is no trite or trivial day. We are blessed on this day to have the opportunity to celebrate 19 years of stellar pastoral leadership under our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. Church family, help me show some love to our gift to the one that God has favored us with. We call him pastor, he is our shepherd, he is our visionary, he is our leader. Men and women around the world look up to his ministry and we have 
him here every Sunday. Come on, help me really honor God for the way by which God has blessed us with our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. 19 years of peace and prosperity, 19 years of promoting the gospel, and we thank God for it. We thank God for it. Listen, we should never take for granted what God had, has deposited here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We are truly blessed to call him our pastor and we honor him. So many people want to honor him from around this world because of his ministry and we get to do it every Sunday. We thank God for 19 years. We thank God for Mrs. Cosby and her serving with him, alongside him, and the Cosby crew. Love you first. You know what I'm thinking, you know it. Amen. We thank God for the entirety of the first family. Um, we are blessed by, by their presence every Sunday, and uh, because they are such a blessing, there are some special guests who wanted to come and hang out with us. Would you help me thank God for Kirk Carr and the Kirk Carr Singers on this Sunday afternoon? Amen. How many of you know that the presence of the Lord is here? I want to see who came to praise the Lord in here. Can we lift our hands in the sanctuary? Can we do it? Can we do it? Come on, clap, clap. I want to hear just the audience. Just the audience. We
love it. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No music. Modulate. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, how many of y'all made a TikTok video off me? One, two, yeah! Not yet, Kirk Carr remix. And we will. And we will praise you for the rest of us. And we will. And we will praise you for the rest of us. Rest of us. Rest of us. Rest of us. Ah. Day. Y'all so churchy. Because, because, because the Lord is in the temple, let everybody mind. Let all, let all the people. That's you. Let all, let all the people. Let all. Say now if you believe that God's got a miracle in the house for you, scream. Praise. Cut the music, I want to prove we're not singing to a track.
A blessing from the Lord. Showing off, girl.
write those words for? Who did I write those words for? So I you can I want to prove that there's power in that name in the name as loud as you can scream out your first name one two three <laughs> nothing happened as loud as you can on the count of three say your last name one two three <laughs> still nothing happened now, I know you love your mama on the loudest you can, as loud as you can on the count of three. Say your mother's first name. One, two, three. I love your mama, but nothing happened. This time on the count of three, I want you to say the name that's above every name. The name that makes sick bodies heal. The name that makes demons tremble. What's your name? What's your name? Two, three.
these past 19 years, I'm sure it hasn't been easy. And a lot of times at anniversaries, we like to talk about the flowery stuff, the, oh, he's been so great and all that. But you know, pastor and our people ain't easy. And I'm sure there's been a whole lot of times where he's had weapons formed against him. But look at your neighbor and say, thank God he wouldn't let it prosper. God blocked it. High five three people around you and say, God blocked it. There were dangers awaiting me. Destruction was sure to be. But thank God for angels shielding and protecting and looking out for me. Thank you, Lord. The devil had a plan. But God intercepted his plan. Chicago roots. I want to go to the south side of Chicago. Jesus can work it out. Give me one of them good old Chicago beats. Come on. Let me in the church say yeah.
Cosby, I know in another lifetime you used to be a choir director. Somebody ought to thank God for blocking something. Woo. No weapon formed against me shall prosper because God blocked it. Oh, somebody help me celebrate the blocking of God. Blessing, the blocking of God. celebrate a God who still blocks the work of the enemy. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Please be seated if you're able, if you choose to. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Somebody's still excited that what the devil meant for evil, God worked it for your good. Oh, come on, Cordell, and celebrate for me, man. Celebrate, celebrate. What the devil meant for evil, God blocked it and turned it around for my good. Bless the name of the Lord in this place. Well, come on and praise him like he's worthy. Praise him like he's worthy, beloved. Everything that tried to get to you did not get to you. Because <laughs> God blocked it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody give him glory because he's worthy. Somebody celebrate him because he's worthy today. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord.
Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Thank God for yet another expression of His goodness and grace toward us. I'm so excited that we serve a God who still blocks certain things so that we might have victory, be overcomers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Help me thank God for Kurt Carr and the Kurt Carr Singers. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. I've, I have, like many of you, I have several playlists on my devices. I've got a morning worship playlist. I got a worship prep playlist. I got a gym mix playlist. And on every one of those, your music is represented because it helps me to experience God in a phenomenal way. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I uh, praise God for him. He's my brother for real, he's my friend. Uh, every now and then we just text one another to see how each other is doing. And I'm so glad that he's spending, he's spending time with us in worship today. Yeah, go ahead and praise him. Yep, you may as well. That's what we do in church. That's what we do in church. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you can't beat her, you might as well join her. <laughs> no need to spectate, participate. Just praise God with her, man. Don't look at her. Praise God with her. Glory to God forevermore. Glory to God forevermore. You don't know what God blocked for her. She just telling him thank you. Come on, you better tell him thank you right along with her. what we do in church. You praise him, I praise him. I don't need to know why you're praising him. I'm just going to let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. 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 Amen. Listen, y'all gonna have to get the announcements later. It's time for church. Come on. Y'all gonna have to get the announcements later. They're gonna sing. He's gonna preach. We gonna have church. Come on, let's have church. She gave me so many church mints, my breath was minty for a week. <laughs> I 
And it's just nice to be nice to people. And I found out at the end of service, that was Pastor Cosby's mama. I celebrate her today, and I really do. admire the ministry here. And I thought, first of all, I want to hear this preacher. I had never heard him before. And Dr. Wesley was amazing earlier today. Can't wait to hear you. Yes. And I'm like you, Pastor Cosby. My two favorite things is singing and preaching. I love, I love it. And I was thinking that I should probably bring a gift but what do you give somebody that's already a millionaire, multi-millionaire in Jesus' name? <laughs> Y'all give it up for my amazing singers, the Kirk Carr singers. I've been through a whole lot. A lot of people don't know this, but two years ago, I was given an 80% chance I would not survive the night. I had a severe case of COVID, ended up in the hospital for three weeks. They said my lungs would be compromised perhaps for the rest of my life. Ain't got no oxygen tank. So the gift that I thought I would bring, I'm like the little drummer boy, Parupa Pum Pum. My gift is the gift of being able to hear God and to write it in songs. And if I say anything that resonates as true, I need my wheeler, y'all are my cousins. What's up cousins? Got some cousins behind me in the choir saying too. If I say anything that resonates as true, I want you to scream and say yes, whatever. Brand new song, no one's ever heard it. It says this, can God, can God, can God raise you up after life knocks you down? Can God? Can God give you peace when there's trouble all around? One more question. Can God? Can God? Can God? Can God heal your body when the sickness says no? Can God, can God, can God make you walk in favor wherever you go? Now all the mothers in the room make some noise. We're my mother's mothers. This for you. Can God, can God. The answer is yes, God can. 
Can God? Can God? Can God? Make a way. Can God make a way? I have no way for you. What's the answer? The answer is yes. Breakdown right here. Trust God. I'm gonna trust God again. He always comes through for me. I'm gonna trust God. Again. Is that your testimony? Trust God. Trust God again. I'm gonna trust God again. I'm gonna trust God again. Always comes through. He always comes through. step higher. Now take me to the church of God in Christ.
minor real quick. Come here, Lorraine. Just before the man of God comes and brings a word. Lorraine, sing about the valley experience I'm sure that pastors had in the last 19 years. Take me to the valley. For every mountain You brought me I give you
God, we thank you that when we woke up this morning, we found out three realities. Your mercies are brand new. Your grace is sufficient. And your faithfulness never changes. And because of mercy, grace, and your faithfulness, we give you praise. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be in the land of the living and in the house of the Lord. We invite you to speak now into fertile soil that you may sow the seed of your word. That in due season we will reap if we do not faint or grow weary. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In the name of the incarnate word, Jesus our Christ, we do pray. Amen. You may be seated, beloved. This is the day that the Lord has made. And what a, what a privilege and opportunity God has given for us to be the house of the Lord on this Lord's day. I'm not going to belabor this moment with a lot of protocol, but I think we can pause once again and acknowledge the 19 years of faithful servant senior leadership of the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. It's, it's, you can never give him too much. If you know that the man of God has blessed you in any way at any time, in any way, shape, or fashion, would you do me a favor? Nudge a neighbor and tell him, get up and applaud my pastor. Thank God for Pastor Cosby and what his ministry and life means to the kingdom of our Christ. I thank you, friend, for these 40 years of friendship. I have the invitation now for 25 years consecutively to come and share in this space with the people God has graced you with. Wheeler, the Bible says that God will give you shepherds after God's own heart. God must think something awful special about Wheeler Avenue to grant you William Lawson and Marcus Cosby. You are a blessed family of Christ. Listen, we cannot celebrate the man without celebrating those who make him who he is. There are a whole lot of folk who make Marcus Cosby look better than he actually is. Um, amen. And it starts at home with his partner in life and love and marriage and in ministry, Sister Audrey Cosby. Sister Cosby, go and stand just one time if we can acknowledge the first lady of this house for the love she pours into that brother on the stage. Thank God for her. Listen, I'm gonna get in trouble if I call names, but there are two who have been a blessing to me through Pastor Cosby. I wanna recognize Brother Leon Lewis and all that you do at the music ministry here at Wheeler Avenue. I thank you, brother. With Pastor Cosby and Mr. Lewis, about 500 of your members were in Washington, D.C. about a month ago, worshiping with us at you know, we mix our congregations. This is Wheeler Street. I'm at Alfred Avenue. Um, and I thank you all for coming to celebrate. And I also want to recognize the ministry and gift of one behind the scenes that you all don't see too much. Sister Andrea Tucker. She's the administrative assistant for Pastor Cosby. She keeps his life decent and in order. Sister Tucker, thank you. For more than 20 years, she has made certain my flights took off and landed on time made sure I was where I was supposed to be, and I thank God for her on this day. Very quickly, before we get into the Word, I do want to share that I am grateful for these 19 years to be able to come and celebrate your pastor. Um, in all honesty, though, every 19 years I've come, I felt a little awkward because Pastor Cosby mandates people on his staff to wear black with accents of gold. And, and I've, I've, never, I've never appreciated being in this space with all that black and gold. But today, my heart is encouraged because there's so much crimson and cream in Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Brothers, it is good to be a Kappa man today. Amen, y'all. Hallelujah. And to our Kappa League, these are the future men of Kappa Alpha Psi. To all you young men, we welcome you on today. And finally, let me say this, where, where did Kirk, 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 I have, in this moment, I've remembered how many and multiple times your music ministry has encouraged my soul. And to be in your presence live in worship today is something I don't take lightly. And I honor you, brother, for the way in which God has used you 
to touch all of us. When you start singing some of them songs, y'all don't know the hymn of Amazing Grace, but everybody stood up to the presence of the Lord is here. You don't know the third verse of Lift Him Up, but, but you knew God blocked it. I, I mean, there's just something about your ministry. And I thank God for you on this day. The scripture of the parable of the landowner in the vineyard was read in our hearing in Matthew chapter 20 when our worship began. And in that parable, there's one verse that I think centers and settles us in this moment of listening to God. The 11th verse is disturbing. It simply reads like this. And when they had received it, they began to complain against the landowner. Do me a favor, if you would, look at somebody next to you and just give them the sermon title. Tell them, neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor. Stop, complaining. stop complaining. Stop complaining. Wheeler, you all know what one of my servants, Deacon Beverly Overby, who's with us today, knows. That very rarely can I preach without integrating my children into my sermon. And part of the reason I use them so often is that they've been instrumental in growing me in my faith. If there's one thing kids will teach you how to do, is how to pray. They've grown me in so many ways. I am amazed I have two sons, one 19, one about to be 17. And Pastor Cosby, I believe you can say amen to this. I am always amazed at how very different they are. Came out of the same womb, sleep under the same roof, eat at the same table, and they are as different as night and day. The struggle of any parent in here who has more than one is to understand how to respect their differences, but at the same time, know how to treat them equally. Because the one thing a child is very perceptive of is when something ain't fair. My youngest son was barely five years old when his favorite phrase became, that's not fair. His older brother got to stay up later than he did. Dad, that's not fair. If the older one got an extra helping of dessert, Dad, that's not fair. If he felt he was punished more severely than his older brother had been, Dad, that's not fair. It goes to show us that we are almost instinctively born with a sensitivity to disparity and inequality. The deep within each one of us is a measure of when we feel life has not been fair. When the playing field was not equal. When there were biases against you because of gender, age, color, body shape, hairstyle. And yet there were preferences that promoted folk that didn't look like you. We all are aware when it feels like the playing field just ain't level. And no matter who you are, no matter how much you've grown, there's, there's a little bit of my younger son in each and every one of us. When we feel like life hasn't been fair, we want to raise our hand and say, God, that's not fair. Because the one place we expect life to be fair is with God. If God is no respecter of person, if God doesn't judge me based on my sin, if God forgives me of all my unrighteousness, if God has a plan for my life, then it seems to me that this God we serve ought to make certain that the rules for reward, the opportunities for advancement, the protocol for progress, all of that should be the same for me as it is for you. 
and yet all of us know what it's like to enter a season of life where it feels like God is not fair. That what God made you go through, God kept them from. And beloved, I'm here about to tell you that there are a whole lot of people who stand outside the body of Christ because they had an experience where it felt like God wasn't fair. Here you are coming to church week after week, reading your Bible as a good disciple, being nice to folk you don't like on general Christian principle, not cussing folk out the way you used to and the way they deserve. And here you are trying to do right by God, and it seems like you're always struggling. Uh, but there's a brother down the street, don't even go to church, can't even spell Jesus, ain't opened a Bible since he failed Sunday school. And every time you look up, he got a new car in the drive. Way, got a new check in the mail, got a new boo in the bed. God, that ain't. And in those moments, there is the very real desire to walk away from this thing called faith. Everybody in here has had a moment when you tapped your Bible and said, this thing ain't working. <laughs> and the next time you get there, because you will, I want you to remember this little lesson of life Jesus teaches in the parable of the landowner and the vineyard, which is unique to the Gospel of Matthew. You good Bible study students at Wheeler Avenue know that to really understand a parable, you have to understand what was happening that made Jesus tell the parable in the first place. <laughs> Parables are usually Jesus' response to a question or a concern, and he realizes that what he wants to say is too deep for y'all to get, so he tells it in modern day language and hope you don't miss the breakdown. <laughs> what has happened that made Jesus tell the story parable of the landowner in the vineyard. Let, let me tell you what went down. Jesus was teaching about the requirements to enter the kingdom of God, and the Bible says that a rich young ruler came to have a discussion with him. His brother had a little bit of chump change in his pocket, had gone to church, had church clothes. He probably remember Wheeler. He fed right in at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. He said, Jesus, what do I have to do to get in the kingdom? And they began discussing the law. The boy said, everything you told me to do, I've done. I love my mother and my father. I go to church. I worship God. I read the Bible. I give. And this is what Jesus said, all right, now go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. The brother looked around. You talking to me? He said, no, thank you. and he walks away. Peter and the disciples have watched the interaction and they saw the brother leave because he didn't want to sell everything. So Peter says to Jesus, listen, he walked away, but we've been faithful. We're here every Sunday. We do everything you ask of us. Lord, we've walked away from family. We've walked away from our fishing business. We, we've left our reputation. We, we put it all on the line to follow you. What do we get? Jesus says, well, Peter, let me ask you a question with a little story. There's a man who owned a vineyard. And as was customary in that day, he needed some day laborers to help him with his vineyard. So the Bible says at six in the morning, he goes out to find some workers who would work for the day. You know the brothers that hang out in the corner of Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> he goes and finds a group of them at six in the morning. He said, look here, I need some help in my vineyard. And the Bible says they bargained on a price. The, the word that really 
is used to express the exchange is this Greek term in Bible, symphoneo. Symphoneo. You ought to hear the word symphony. Leon will tell you a symphony is when you have disparate and different vocal and instrumentals that come together in agreement. So a symphony is when you have different perspectives that eventually agree on one term. It's meant to remind us that at 6 a.m., this group, the master was going to hire, they bargained with him. There was a going back and forth. There was a sharing of different perspective and ideas, and finally they agreed on this. And the agreement said this, we'll work a whole day, 12 hours for a whole day pay called a denarius. A full day work, a full day pay. And they go off to work. Symphoneo. At 9 a.m., the landowner goes back to hire some more folk. Pastor Cosby, was it because he didn't hire enough folk at 6? Was it because the 6 o'clock crowd was not efficient? Or maybe he went back at 9 because he could. He decided since it's my field and my money, I can do whatever I want to do because I'm sovereign. So he goes and chooses some folk at nine. And what's important is that at nine, there is no symphonio. There's no bargaining. He learned from the 6 a.m. crowd. He said, listen, I'm going to choose y'all at nine. You go to work. And at the end of the day, I'll just pay you what's right. They go to work. Same thing plays out at noon. He goes back because he can. Hire some folk. No symphonio. Just go to work and I'll pay you what's right. Does it again at 3 p.m. Goes out, finds some folk, hires them. No symphonio. Go to work. I'll pay you what's right. Comes back at 5 p.m. One hour before quitting time and there's some brothers still standing in the corner of Home Depot. Master says, why y'all still standing here? They say, because ain't nobody chose us. He says, you know what? Go to work. At the end of the day, I'll pay you what's right. They get to the farm. They go to work. One hour later, 6 p.m., the bell rings. The work day's over. It's time to get paid. And they line up. It's amazing that they line up in groupings of where they feel affiliated. So the 6 a.m. crowd lines up on one end. The 5 p.m. crowd lines up on the other. 6 a.m. crowd. Their hands are calloused because they've been working all day. They've got sweat on their brow because they've been working 12 hours. Their clothes are stained with dirt because they've worked a whole day. They smell like outside. Because they've been outside. Y'all let me preach all day. Then on the other end is the 5 p.m. crowd. There's no dirt on their clothes. They just got here. There's no sweat on their brow. They ain't done nothing. There's no stink. They smell like ivory and dove because they haven't even had a moment to break a sweat. The master says, you know what, let's do something different. Let, let's pay the 5 p.m. crowd first, and we'll make our way to the 6 a.m. We're going to start with those that ain't done much and pay those that have been there all day long. Bob says the landowner goes up and he pays the 5 p.m. crowd a whole denarius. Don't miss it. 12 hours of pay for one hour of work. Don't nobody say nothing. Because on the other end, the 6 a.m. crowd is watching. And they say, if that's what he paid them, bonus time. The master starts paying everybody. He gets to the 6 a.m. crowd. 
they stick out their hand, he gives them a denarius. And all hell broke loose. The first union in the Bible is formed. Paperwork is filed with the Department of Labor and EEOC. They have a strike and outside they've got signs saying that's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. Now, if I can just teach for a moment, um, parables are based on the literary device of allegory. Uh, in case you don't remember Miss Johnson's fifth grade literature class. Allegory simply means that the characters in the story are meant to represent people in real life. So the question is, where are you in the story? Him, him. Now, now before you say you the landowner. <laughs> uh, let, let me give you the, the landowner is God. And Jesus tells this parable in response to Peter's question after watching the rich young ruler walk away to ask Peter the same question that I'm about to ask you. Which crowd are you in? Are you on the 6 a.m. side of life? Or are you in the 5 p.m. crowd? Who do you identify with most? Those hired last? Are those who know what it's like to work all day long. Now, now, before you get all Holy Ghost filled and try to make your neighbor think that you are on the 5 p.m. side, don't lie. Because all of us have some 6 a.m. inside of us. All of us have moments where we want to holler to God, that's not fair. The Bible says they complain. The word complain in the original Koine Greek of the New Testament is, is, the, uh, is this phrase that's kind of hard to explain. It's the phrase, gone got zoo. Someone say, gone got zoo. Gone. Amen, you just learned some Greek. Gone got zoo does not simply mean to complain. It means to complain in a low voice. Gone got is when you want to shout it, but you can't. Because your neighbor thinks you're sanctified. <laughs> Gongatsu is when it's in your heart, but you struggle to get it out of your mouth because you don't want anybody to think that you ain't God and not on the best of terms. Gongatsu is when you feel it, but you know you're too sanctified to shout it, so you have to whisper it. And everybody in here has whispered, gone God zoo at some point in your walk with God. Gone God zoo. When what God allowed you to go through, God kept them from. Gone God zoo. When the rules that seemed to apply to them didn't apply to you. Gone God zoo. When your hard work was overlooked and their immorality and laziness was promoted. Gone God soon. When their mama got it and was delivered, your mama got it and died. Gone God soon. When they went to graduation, your child went to rehab. Gone God soon. They celebrated anniversaries. You paid alimony. Gone. Gone. God. Zoo. They complained. It may not have been loud. It may not have been tattooed. It may not have been on their t-shirt. But deep in their heart and quiet on their lips. They complained. And here's the tripped out part. The master heard it. They thought they were keeping it quiet, but the master heard it. 
And when the master hears that they're complaining, he gets angry. He says, now go on and take the denarius I gave you and get out of here. Watch what he says, Kirk Carr. He says, I'm not doing wrong by you, friend. Now, now, when you read that in the Bible, when you go home, please know that friend is not a term of endearment. The way friend is used here is really nice nasty. Do you know folk who are nice nasty? You know what nice nasty is? Nice nasty, I'm gonna help you. Nice nasty in African-American vernacular colloquial linguistic terminology. Uh, nice nasty is the way black folk use the adjective little. If, if we throw little on the front of something, we be a nice nasty. Look at you with your little job. Oh, you over there with your little friends, uh-huh. <laughs> she thinks she's talking about that little Chanel bag she got over there. You, you know. It's nice nasty. The master gets nice nasty with the folk who are complaining. What's wrong with this 6 a.m. crowd? Well, understand part of the problem goes back to how they went to work. Symphoneo. They bargained with the master. They thought their service was bartered with the Lord. That they negotiated the terms of their reward. And so they went to work with the expectation that somehow the master was obligated to live up to the terms they set that he agreed to. There's some folk who literally believe that God is somehow obligated to do something for you because of what you think you've done for him. Uh, oh, I'm about to get thrown out of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. But, but beloved, in the term and time in which Jesus told this parable, you need to know that Roman temples always had a Latin phrase above the entry. The, the, the Latin phrase said, do ut des, do ut des, do ut des, literally translate, I do so that you will do. That they're literally people who enter their relationship with the Lord thinking that this faith thing is a negotiation, and if you do X, Y, and Z, God ought to respond with A, B, and C. And the danger of organized religion is that it will delude you into thinking that your righteousness obligates God. Since I come to church, my prayers ought to get a yes. Since I read the Bible, God ought to move on my behalf. Since I gave up cussing, every now and then, that God ought to somehow respond to me. And it's easy to become frustrated when you think God broke the terms of agreement. So watch what the master says, and it's about to get real quiet in here. The master says, hold on. You did what you signed up to do. There's nothing you've done that went above and beyond what you signed up to do. Nothing you've done is so extraordinary that I owe you something. Beloved, I came by to ask you a question. What have any of us done 
that's so miraculous and extraordinary that God ought to look at us and say, oh, you know what, I owe you something because you went above and beyond. At the end of the day, whatever you've done for God is what you signed up to do. What is on your re resume of religion that ought to impress God? I, I know you're saying, well, I'm nice to folk that are mean to me. That's what you signed up to do. I come to church every week. That's what you signed up to do. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. I forgave them when they did me wrong. That's what you signed up to do. Because if you don't forgive brothers and sisters their sin, God will not forgive you. You gave extra in the offering. That's what you signed up to do. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, says the Lord. Everything you have done in your religious walk with God ain't nothing more than what you signed up to do. And God is not impressed with any of our religious resumes. Can I push this? I, I, know, I know I'm not going to come back next year. It's all right. Um, <laughs> did you know that someone can do so much for you that it's impossible for them to owe you something? <laughs> Say it again. It's possible for someone to do so much for you that they never owe you anything. Okay, okay, I'm going to help you. Um, so I just sent my oldest son off to college for his freshman year. And AJ, we had a real battle because he doesn't like shopping, so he didn't want to buy any clothes. And the boy had like three pair of drawers, two pair of socks trying to go to college. <laughs> so I say, hey, 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 you got to get some clothes. So one Saturday, I woke him up so we can go to the mall so I could spend my money to buy him clothes for college. He got an attitude, because I woke him up on Saturday. Now I'm waking you up so we can go to the mall and spend my money to get you clothes for college. Boy, get up. Gets up with an attitude, we go downstairs, and Pastor Cosby, his car, no, I'm sorry, the car I bought him, is blocking my car. So he says, Dad, let's just take my car. And I said, you mean the car I bought you? So we get in the car that I bought him to go to the mall to spend my money to buy him clothes for college. He gets in the car. He gets in the passenger seat because he said, Dad, I'm sleepy. Okay, I, I, all right. So I'm going to drive the car I bought you so we can go to the mall and spend my money to buy you clothes for college. That's how we driving down. All of a sudden, the light comes on. The boy ain't got no gas in the car. So now we got to pull over. And he's sleeping, so I get out the car to pay and pump for gas in the car I bought him that I'm driving so he can sleep while we go to the mall to spend my money to get him clothes for college. Y'all ain't feeling me yet. I'm pumping and paying for gas in a car I bought so this little joker can sleep while I'm driving to the mall to spend my money to buy him clothes for college. He wakes up while I'm pumping gas and paying for the gas I'm putting in the car I bought him while I'm driving to take him to the mall, spend my money. He wakes up, he says, Dad, I'm going to get a Gatorade. I said, get me a coffee while you're in there. He comes back out the store with the Gatorade and the coffee, and I just finished pumping and paying for gas to put in the car I bought him that I'm driving so he can sleep while I'm taking him to the mall to spend my money to buy him clothes for college. This joker gets in the car. And he looks at me. 
I looked back at him. He looked at me. I looked at him. This is what he said. You owe me a dollar. Hold on. I'm paying for gas and pumping gas in a car I bought you that I'm driving so you can sleep while I take you to the mall to spend my money and you got the nerve to tell me I've done so much for you I can never owe you for what you've done for me Somebody, you're quiet and wheeler because you're a little slow. But you got a person on your pew that comes to church every Sunday. As if God somehow owes them something. And God looks back at you and says, with everything I've done for you already, I woke you up this morning. I kept you from your sins last night. I blocked the devil's attempt to kill you. I put food on your table. I put sanity in your mind. I put joy in your heart. God doesn't owe me. How dare you come to Wheeler Avenue with your hand out when your hands ought to be up. I'm going to say that again. Next time you want to stick your hand out, think of all the ways God has made. Think of all the prayers God has answered. Think of all the doors God has opened. Think of all the blessings God has given. Think of all the provisions God has sent. Think of all the enemies God has shut. Think of all the death God kept away. And don't stick your hand out. Stick your hand. Now, the 5 p.m. crowd is different. Because the 5 p.m. crowd didn't symphonio. They simply said, we're going to trust that at the end of the day, you're going to do what's right. And I came all the way from Alexandria, Virginia, down here to Houston, Texas, to recruit some folk to the 5 p.m. side of life. Well, your walk with God is not based on an expectation or bargain of what you think God owes you, but just a trust and belief that when it's all over said and done, that when the last has been dealt and the final breath has been breathed and the last day has come, that we serve a God who will always do what is right. I wish I had someone who trusted and believed that all things do work together. For them that love the Lord, is there anybody here who knows that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord? Yeah. Now somebody tell him he'll do what's right. Yeah. Um, Kirk Carl was thinking about this 5 p.m. crowd, and something in the parable bothers me, and I'm going to be done. The man went to Hiram at six in the morning. Hired again at nine, at noon, and at three. When he comes back at five, 11 hours later, they still standing right over there. Now what I gotta ask, why come? Why come they ain't leave? I mean, doesn't it make more sense to say if he did that for the 6 a.m. and the 9 and the noon and the 3, that we all just quit? Why are they still standing 11 hours later in the parking lot of Home Depot? I mean, isn't it easier to quit on God when God ain't been fair to you? Isn't it easy just to leave church when you feel like coming to church ain't working no more? Isn't it easier to give up on God when God's been better to them 
than God seemingly been to you? Why are they still standing there? So I found one of them and asked him. I said, hey man, why are you still standing here at five o'clock? And this is what he said to me. He said, listen, we were here at six and he chose some folk at six, but he didn't choose us. So we was about to quit, but then he showed back up at nine and he chose some more folk. He didn't choose us, so we was about to quit. But then he showed back up at noon. And then he showed back up at three. And the reason we're still here is that we just realized he ain't done yet. Oh! And I don't know who needs to hear this, but whenever it feels like God ain't good, it's cause God ain't done. I wish you slept five with somebody and tell him he's not done yet. I don't care what the doctor said, he ain't done yet. I don't care what the judge ruled, he ain't done yet. I don't care what the supervisor said, God ain't done. Uh, okay, okay, y'all gonna make me work at 11.30? Here it is. You've gotta learn how to wait for God to finish. Some of you all walk away prematurely. I I'm gonna help you. Um, have you ever gone to see a Marvel comic movie? Iron Man, Ant-Man, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Thor, Hulk, Spider-Man, Black Panther. Marvel has trained you to watch movies differently. Because if you've ever gone to a Marvel movie, there's gonna come a moment when it appears the movie's over. As a matter of fact, it's gonna look so bad, the credits are gonna start rolling. And normally that's your cue to get up and leave. But Marvel has taught you just because the credits roll. Does not mean the movie's over. Sit down and wait because after the credits, there's gonna be a preview. Uh, uh, I don't know who I came to preach to today, but don't you walk out on God right now. Sit yourself down and wait for God to give you the preview of what's coming next. Uh, Tell somebody he's not done yet. I've, I gotta go. I wanna go to this picnic and get me some brisket. Oh. The 6 a.m. crowd, they were complaining. And the 5 p.m. crowd is just grateful. And I had to figure out what is the difference. We all receive the same. Why do some complain? And why are some grateful? Maybe you're on the 6 a.m. side. Let me recruit you to 5 p.m. living. Because the 5 p.m. crowd looked at the denarius in their hand. And they realized that a denarius is what you get for 12 hours of work. And they looked at the denarius and they looked at their work record. 
and they came to the conclusion that the master has put in my hand more than I could ever deserve and more than I have earned. I'm not preaching to you 6 a.m. folk who think you earned everything you have. I want some 5 p.m. saints who look at what God has blessed you with and say, when I think of what the Lord has put in my hand, I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I didn't merit it. But God in his grace gave me more than I deserve. Is there anybody here who knows God's been better to you than you deserve God to be? God blessed you with more than you could have ever earned by yourself. To God be the glory for the things he's done. Thank God for grace. Pastor, he's put in your hands more than you deserve. Whoa, but if that didn't shout you, here comes the final amen. The landowner is so wealthy that he has a manager who works for him. Because when it's time to get paid, he tells the manager, go and pay them. The manager's responsibility is to do it on behalf of the owner. The manager does it so the owner doesn't have to. Here's why the 5 p.m. crowd shouted. Because when it came time to get hired, it wasn't the manager who hired them. The owner went to the parking lot when he didn't have to and chose who he didn't need to. Can I tell you why 5 p.m. saints shout? Because we realize God did for us what God didn't have to do and God did it by himself when I was not worthy. God didn't have to wake me up this morning. God didn't have to clothe me in my right mind. God didn't have to answer my prayers. Is there anybody here that's just grateful that God did for you what God didn't have to do? Um, and that's why I'm in the 5 p.m. crowd. So when I look back over my life, I realize God has done for me what God didn't have to do. And that's why I shout the way I shout. That's why I praise him the way I do. That's why I lift up hands the way I do. You may look at me and not see much, but me and God know how unworthy my life has really been. Me and God know how much grace has blessed me. Me and God know that God has done for me what God didn't have to do. And since I'm in the 5 p.m. crowd, I'm gonna take you back to the streets at 5 p.m. At 5 p.m. when you walk in any local drinking establishment, when you walk in any local watering hole, when you go to the club at 5 p.m., 5 p.m. marks the beginning of a special time. 5 p.m. ain't no regular time. Those of y'all that been in the streets know 5 p.m. is what we call Forgive me, Wheeler. I'm in that happy crowd. I'm so happy that God saved me. I'm so happy that God blessed my life. Is there anybody here who's happy today? Nudge your neighbor and tell them I'm in the 5 p.m. crowd. It's happy hour. If you're happy and you know it, wave your hand. If you're happy and you know it,
Let the happy saints say hallelujah. The word of the Lord is stop complaining and get happy. God has already given us more than we deserve. God, we thank you for your overabundant blessings. We thank you that you keep on doing great things in each one of our lives. And now in the name of the Lord Jesus, as a consequence of your word and this worship, will you save somebody today? We add to the church in the name of Jesus Christ. Will you prove to us that you're still the God who comes for that 5 p.m. crowd and you keep on granting us the favor that we would never be able to earn. We give you praise for this word and may it not return unto you void. Will you save today? Transform by the power of the Holy Ghost and get all the glory in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. And listen, very quickly, I'm going to do three things. We're going to do three things. I'm going to extend an invitation. And I don't want us, did you hear the preacher man? He said, don't leave too soon because you never know what that owner has planned for you. So please don't leave before the benediction. I understand what time it is. I know we're beyond time. It's a special day. And we've been celebrating in a special way. So I want you to stay right there. I'm going to do three things very quickly. I want to invite somebody to a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know, sister, I want you to know, brother, that the Lord has a very special place for you in his vineyard. And if you're here on this Sunday afternoon and you say, Pastor, I need to be saved. I need to be a part of this church. And I know that the Lord has led me here for such a time as this. The Shackelfords are going to come and join me. These are leaders of our church, and other leaders are going to stand all around the Lord's house today, both here in the cathedral and in the sanctuary. The sanctuary is packed with brothers and sisters who could not get into the cathedral this afternoon. And we praise God for all of them who are there. But I want you to know, don't leave over there in the sanctuary. I can see you. Don't you leave. Don't you leave. Stay right there until this invitation is extended, and I do two more things thereafter. If you know you need to be saved, you know you need to be a part of the church, I want you to come and join me here at the cathedral. Who's in the sanctuary? Who's in the sanctuary? And the Reverend Boone is in the sanctuary. You'll see him with leaders of our church. If you know you need to be a part of the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and the body of Christ, I want you to start walking right now. They're going to start singing in a minute. Before they start even singing, I want you to start walking to them. You say, Pastor, I need to be a part of this church. I need to be a part of this family of believers. Come on, right now. Come on. Come on, we're waiting for you. Look at my two brothers right there. Come on, man. God bless you. Start walking this way. Come on, come on. Come on. I see you coming, my dear sister. Praise God for you. Got that Chicago Bears t-shirt on. God bless you, sis. Praise the Lord for you. Follow the leadership of our, our leaders. They'll tell you exactly how to get down this way. Come on, come on. We praise God for you. God bless you, my brother. Come from that front row. Praise God for you, man. Happy for you. Here comes my sister down the center aisle. Anybody happy beside me? I'm so happy about it. Listen, somebody may need to move in the sanctuary. Don't allow any pressures, any distractions to stop you from doing what you know you need to do on this Sunday afternoon. Just start moving toward us and we'll celebrate with you as you move in this direction. I see you coming down that balcony. Hey, little man, God bless you. Praise God for you. Come on, come on, come on. You say, Pastor, I'm only in town for a little while. I'm here for a temporary job assignment. I'm here for school. I'm one of these collegiates in school. Listen, we have what is known as watch care. It means we'll watch over you and care for you while you're here. God bless you, sis. We'll watch over you, care for you while you're here. Then we'll send you back to your place of origin with joy at the appropriate time. If you need to be under watch care, I want you to come toward us right now. Maybe you're that student who says, I just need a church while I'm in Houston, Texas. Maybe you're that person who's in on a temporary job assignment. Maybe you're just here for a 12-hour shift like these folk in the text. Come on down here. We're waiting on you. I see you, sis. God bless you. Praise God for you. I see you coming from the balcony over there. I see all of you making your way right now. Listen, this is what I want you to do. I see you coming, my dears. Praise the Lord for you. 
So now these have already started walking. We're going to make it easier for the next group of people. Maybe this is the 9 o'clock crowd. Maybe this is the 12 o'clock crowd. Maybe it's the 3 o'clock crowd. It may be the 5 o'clock crowd. But they're going to start moving. But we're going to make it easy for them. We're all going to stand together. They're going to slip out of that aisle and slip out of that row where they are into the aisle that's closest to them. And they're going to make their way down this way. And while they start walking, you start celebrating. Look at them coming down the balcony. I need some music. Let's sing together. While they're moving, that 3 o'clock crowd is coming. That 3 o'clock crowd is coming. You ought to be celebrating them. Here comes that 5 o'clock crowd. Come on and praise God for them. Come on. And all that's within me. All that's within me. Bless his holy name. Who else needs to come? Come on, brother. Come on, sister. We're waiting for you. We're so excited about your future. We're so excited. Yeah. Come on, everybody. Sing with me. If you know this old school song of the church, sing, bless the Lord. Bless your sins. We saw you walk in the church this morning. God bless you. God bless you. So excited about your future. Bless your whole, whole soul. God bless you. Come on, man. We've been waiting on you, bro. So happy for you. Praise the Lord. Hey, sir. Come on. We celebrate with you. Can we sing it again? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And not I will. Just bless. Bless the Lord. done great things. Let's sing together. Oh, he, he has done great things. Oh, he has, he done, has great done great things. things. Oh, he has done Are there others? Come on. Things. Are there others? We're waiting he has on done you. Great he has done things. great things. He has done 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 great things. Yes, he has done great things. Sing, church. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. get some people to bless the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Have your seats for just a minute. I'm going to get to numbers two and three in just a minute, but while we're still on number one, let me thank God for each of these precious people that has made their way down these aisles on this Sunday afternoon, not just here in the cathedral, but check out the sanctuary because while they're in the sanctuary, brothers and sisters have joined the Lord's church today. Listen, on behalf of this entire church family, beginning with our founding pastor who is not here today, but he certainly loves and thanks God for each one of you. And in concluding with every one of us who's a part of the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, I want each of you to know that you are welcome here. I'm excited about your future. I'm looking forward to being your pastor. There are brothers and sisters around you who are looking forward to being your brothers and sisters in this community of faith known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. To each one of you both here with me and over there with Reverend Boone, welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Church family, celebrate our friends one more time, please. Amen, amen, amen. Deacon Shackleford, will you raise your hand? That distinguished gentleman right there is Deacon Ray Shackleford. He's standing along with the Reverend Don Floyd. Each of them is going to take you into the new member orientation room here in the cathedral. Others will do the same in the sanctuary, and they're going to give you some information about being a new member of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And while you're walking, we're going to be celebrating. God bless you. Praise God for your membership. 
on the avenue. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at what the Lord has done for us on this Sunday afternoon. We got some new family members. And we praise God for them. Thank you so much, Deacon Shackleford. Thank you for all of you who are serving today. That was number one. Can I get to number two? It's offering time in the Lord's church. Amen. I forget some things. I don't forget that thing. Amen. It's time for us to give unto the Lord. Our ushers are moving about us now. If you need an envelope, they will make them available to you. So you can put your paper gift into that envelope. If you're not using envelopes, you can use the digital platforms that are scrolling even now on our screen. There are multiple ways by which we can give. If you're giving in the envelope, please know that the, the, the drop boxes, the receptacles for our offerings are across the, congreg across the church house, uh, in the cathedral, and in the sanctuary buildings. And you can make those, those drops as soon as the benediction has been pronounced. And we hope that you will do that. May I pray over the gift that you give so that God will continue to expand you and multiply to you that which you give unto him. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for each gift and each giver. And I pray your blessings upon each one even now. I give you thanks for the faith that your people give, that your people have to give unto you. And I pray that you will increase their faith so they will trust you in every area of their lives, including their financial stewardship. We give you praise that you will return unto your sons and daughters as you see fit. And we will always testify that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. We thank you for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Amen. That's number two. Let's give unto the Lord. If you haven't given already, please begin to give even now. And this is number three. It's the three, th third thing on my three-point three, three, uh, three point request. And that's just a few announcements as we prepare to leave from the Lord's church today. You do know that we're leaving here and in an hour, in one hour and 12 minutes, we begin our church picnic. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the wonderful things that we're going to experience. It's going to be a great fellowship. Food for everybody is down there, especially if you've registered. I want you to make sure that you're going down. Let's have a good time. We're going to take off these church clothes, put on our play clothes, and have a good time fellowshipping with one another. And then when the picnic is over, we're gonna, we're gonna root on the Astros and we're gonna believe that they're gonna do well today. Go Strohs! Amen. They're coming home. And so we'll be in that, in, that, in that mix of celebration while we're downtown. And I look forward to that. Listen, Wednesday we'll be in prayer at 6 a.m. Bible study at noon. Prayer again at 6 p.m. And then we will be in our fourth and final experience of Wednesdays in the Word. Wednesdays in the Word has been amazing this month. And I believe that Wednesday is going to be just the same as the Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III comes to preach to us at 7 p.m. Worship, I'm sorry, worship really begins with prayer during the 6 o'clock hour. And then at the 7 o'clock hour, we'll celebrate in revival experience. Our mayoral candidates will be here on the Wheeler Avenue campus this Thursday at 5.30 p.m. If you're interested in what our candidates' positions and platforms may be, just come on to the church. You will hear from them. Questions will be asked and answered, and I hope that you will share with us during that time. Please know that next Sunday, like we did last Sunday, last Sunday we wore pink in observance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is likewise Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So next Sunday, put on your purple, and let's do a purple out here in the sanctuary of the cathedral, and let's remember that there are folk in the church who are victims of domestic violence, and we want to be aware of that, praying for them and doing all that we can to ensure that people's lives are made better despite the circumstances and consequences they have had to endure. So please do that for us, and we'll be more, we'll be more than happy to share in that Purple Celebration next week. Listen, everything, every, every time we come together preparing for Thanksgiving, when we move out of October into November, we remember that there are brothers and sisters who are hungry. Most of us will have a great Thanksgiving meal, but some people do not have the luxuries of that kind of meal. And so we always restock our food bank and we bring canned goods around the, the end of October all the way through November. And we have a goal every year. And this year our goal is 25,000 canned goods. And I hope that you will begin 
in even tomorrow to bring the canned goods to the church, bring them to the church, just drop them off and know that we will take them to the food pantry and make sure that our sisters and brothers in the Houston community will be blessed. Every year we exceed our goal. So we expect to exceed 25,000, but that's what our goal is for this year. And I hope that you will join us with a congregation like ours. We can easily exceed 25,000, right? So let's make sure we do it. Don't forget to do that. It's going to certainly make a difference in somebody's life. Please, we're asking for canned goods, not ramen noodles. We're asking for canned goods, not macaroni and cheese. We're asking for canned goods, and I want you to remember that. I have to say that because, er, uh, yes, yeah, somebody brings spaghetti. And I don't want you to bring spaghetti. I want you to bring canned goods, non-perishable, that the expiration date is still intact. All right, so not just clearing out your cabinet and your pantry at the house. Make sure you're going to bless somebody with the canned goods. Tell them, nudge your neighbor and say he's talking about you. Don't say that to the people. That's not right. All right. All right. I'm excited about the many things. I want to thank this church for being such a blessing to my family and to me. These 19 years of pastoral leadership have been amazing. They have been phenomenal. And I want to thank you for being so kind, so sweet, so loving. Our family has been blessed by the opportunity to serve, and I'm so grateful, so grateful to each one of you for making these, this journey a phenomenal journey. Help me celebrate again, Mrs. Audrey Marie Cosby. She's a blessing, and I thank God for her. Amen. Amen. We've got five amazing children. Adrian Marie Gaines, our firstborn, uh, lives in Detroit now because she is married uh, to the Reverend Dr. Micah Gaines, who's the pastor of the Christ Baptist Church there. Uh, Christ, what, what? Greater Christ Baptist Church there in Detroit. And uh, she was here this week, but she had to go back because today is their wedding anniversary. So I had to, had to release my child, Lord have mercy. Had to release my child, so she's there. But she left her son, their son, with us. And so little baby Micah is here. We're so grateful that our baby boy is here. Our grandson is here. We praise God for him. Ashley Marie, wave your hand. Praise God for our second born. And for uh, Marcus D. Cosby the, third, the second, raise your hand, man. It's good to see you. I don't see Matthew. Matthew's away somewhere being Matthew. And we praise God for him. And uh, Aaliyah Marie is our last born. We praise God for them. Thank God for my mother. Pastor Westy has already acknowledged her. Thank God for her. My big brother, Deacon Andre, Marie, Andre Bernard Cosby, thank God for you. My sister-in-law, Kim, praise God for all of you. And thank you so much for making our, our lives so much better because we are here. Listen, we've got to go, but um, I want to thank God. One, f finally, finally, this last thing of the third request. Uh, Dr. Barbara Williams, you still over there? Did she, did she leave? I can't see her. Oh, she's back there. Okay. Dr. Barbara Williams, uh, today is the 19th pastoral anniversary. Today is her 80th birthday. Will you help me celebrate it? 80th birthday. Come on over here, Dad. Yep, yep. She's our minister of counseling. Yeah. She's been counseling around here for more than 30 years. And I want you to celebrate her birthday with us. Clap, 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 clap. Bless you, man. <laughs> Doesn't even look 80, does she? Look like she's about 60, maybe, maybe 55. But we thank God for these 80 years of her life and that she has committed herself to blessing the Lord's church. All right. Minister of Music, Leon Lewis, I thank God for you, man, and for making sure that all this wonderful music was brought to us today. Kurt Carr and the Kurt Carr Singers. Loretta, love you, love you. Praise God for all of you. Thank God for the best pastoral staff anybody can ask for. Thank God for these preachers. Reverend Johnson and all of them who serve. And we've got a whole other staff full of brothers and sisters who serve every single day. And I thank God for all of you. And then for all these volunteers who make Wheeler Avenue run the way it runs and do, and, and they help Wheeler Avenue to do what we do. And to our board leaders, thank you so much, chair people, for your goodness and for your consistent excellence at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And Wheeler Avenue, you're just a great church all by yourself. Will you help me celebrate who we are as the people of God? And let's stand together and praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Father Benediction, I've been alluding to the fact that he is just one of the rarest gifts to the body of Christ that we've seen in this generation. But one more time, will you help me thank God for our co-pastor, my brother beloved, Dr. Howard John Wesley. What a blessing you are, sir. What a blessing you are. Who said Alphas and Kappas can't get along? Yes, we can. And the Omegas said that. Shame on the Omegas for saying that. Shame on them. And the, and the Sigmas joined in. That's a shame. That's a shame. But I thank God for our fellowship and for our brotherhood. Make sure you get yourself a good friend in this life. You love on them, let them love on you. Encourage them, let them encourage you. Support them and don't be jealous because God's got enough gifts to go around for all of us. All right? Yeah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And you're going out and you're coming in. And you're laboring in your leisure and your joy as well as in your sorrow, in your laughter, and likewise in your tears until that day when we meet the Lord face to face and cry holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. Until that day, my brothers, my sisters, go in peace, go in love, go in joy, and may the very God of peace, love, and joy go with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let's sing together. Amen. Sing, church. your church family leaving from the rear of the cathedral first the rear and the balcony will depart first those